بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على محمد رسول الله سيد الأولين والآخرين وإمام الأنبياء والمرسلين والشافع المشفع يوم الدين على آله الطيبين وأزواجه الطاهرات أمهات المؤمنين وصحابته الغر الميامين ومن استنى بسنته واهتدى بهدي إلى يوم الدين أما بعد حياكم الله my dear brothers and sisters to this continuing session of the benefits from the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in uh, the last week session we uh, talked about uh, what Ibn Qayyim Rahimahullah Ta'ala said in his book Zad Al-Ma'ad in the chapter of uh, the way of Rasulullah Sallallahu in regard to uh, in regard to fasting and today uh, we are uh, talking about or last last week we talked about the purpose of fasting and today we are um, we are uh, and today we are uh, going to go through the um, uh, fast uh, how fast affects upon the Muslim, upon the person who's fasting, whether in issues of uh, aqidah or the uh, physical issues and manners and characters, uh, etc. Uh, because uh, every worship should have an influence over the person who is performing it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, about uh, prayer, for example, in the munkar. Prayer indeed uh, prevent the person who's or the performer of it from the fahsha and munkar, meaning the bad speech and bad uh, actions and bad uh, things. So um, uh, fasting also does the same thing, as well as Zakah, as Allah Ta'ala said, خُدْ مِنْ أَمْوَارِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِيرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا Take from their wealth some uh, uh, amount of uh, charity that you uh, purify them uh, and recommend them with. And also Hajj, uh, as in the Hadith, مَنْ حَجَّ فَلَمْ يَرْفُتْ وَلَمْ يَبْسُقْ رَجَعَ مِنْ ذُنُوبِهِ كَيَوْمِ وَلَدَتُهُ أُمُّهُ He who ever uh, performs Hajj uh, and uh, yani having no any uh, any sin done by uh, him then uh, uh, he will return from his hajj as a newborn child all these are uh, effects that the ibadat can do to the muslim when he performs them fasting is one of them as Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, وَلِلصَّوْمِ تَأْثِيرٌ عَجِيبٌ فِي حِفْظِ الْجَوَارِحِ الظَّاهِرَةِ وَالْقُوَى الْبَاطِنَةِ وَحِمْيَتِهَا عَنِ التَّخْلِيطِ الْجَارِبِ لَهَا الْمَوَادَّ الْفَاسِدَةِ الَّتِي إِذَا اسْتَوْلَتْ عَلَيْهَا أَفْسَدَتْهَا He says, and fasting has a very wonderful uh, effect upon the, or in uh, in uh, saving the uh, apparent um, apparent organs or limbs of the person and the hidden uh, power of the person and also the fasting keeps it uh, away from the bad mix uh, the bad mixing that brings all bad um, Substance to the body or to the soul, which if it controls the body, if it takes the, if it overtakes the the body and the heart and the desire and the intention, it will destroy it and damage it, and damage it. So the perfect fasting, the perfect fasting, and that's why um, in the Hadith the Prophet Sallallahu said, "Man lam yada qawl al zur wal amal bihi." He whoever does not stop 
saying the false and acting upon it, then Allah is not in need for him to abandon his food and drinking. And also Jabir radiallahu anhu said, uh, لا تجعل يوم صومك ويوم فطرك سواء إذا صمت فليصم سمعك وبصرك to the end of the uh, author. He said, Jabir said, don't let the day of your fasting be similar to the day in which you are not fasting. If you are fasting, then let your sighting, your, your eyes fast, your ear fast, etc. What does that mean? Protect your fasting from these things that if not uh, nullify it, at least it uh, reduces the uh, reward of it and the effect of it upon your iman. Uh, yani it does not increase the iman the way it should be and the way the person wishes. And then he continues saying, And also fasting has a great effect in freeing the body from all that uh, bad, uh, yani, uh, bad uh, uh, food and thoughts that brings all what can harm the health of the uh, body and soul. Then he said, Fasting can, uh, can keep the heart and the limbs upon uh, good health. And fasting returns to these organs what the desires have stolen from them of the power and the iman. And it is uh, the best support uh, to find piety. Kama qala Allah ta'ala as Allah subhanahu as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said as in uh, Surah Al-Baqarah ayah 185 where he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said uh, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon Allah Ta'ala there said, O oh, you who believed, uh, decreed upon you uh, is fasting, as it was decreed upon those before you, that you may become righteous. Uh, so the fasting, of course, will uh, have this type of uh, effect and influence upon the person who's fasting. And everyone can see that. When you are fasting, you want to uh, abandon the evil thoughts and evil and, and sins and wrongdoings as much as you can. You don't find the same uh, desire, the same uh, wishes to uh, yani the, the, bad, uh, yani the bad things that Allah doesn't like. You find yourself more tilted to the um, to the good deeds you uh, instead of yani, those who yani, listen to music or like that when they are fasting you find them that they wish to only hear Quran those who used to spend times in reading uh, stories or reading things which non beneficial to them you find them in Ramadan they only Yani read Quran, they love and like reading Quran and, and so forth and so on because the fasting itself has a positive uh, effect and influence upon the heart and upon the body and that's why the Prophet Sallallahu said according to Ibn Qayyim here وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ الصَّوْمُ الصَّوْمُ as in the hadith reported by Al-Bukhari uh, and is Sahih in the book of fasting, chapter of the virtue or the merit of fasting. And also uh, Muslim reported it in Sahih Muslim, uh, as well as uh, Malik in Al-Muwatta, Abu Dawood and Nisa'i. They all 
reported this hadith. As-sawmu junna. What is as-sawmu junna? Sawmu junna. The junna, junna with dham. This word with the, these um, uh, three uh, letter combination or four letter combination, jim, noon, noon, ta, marbuta, uh, junna. Noon, noon, because we have shadda over the noon. That means it's two noons uh, integrated together. We call it idgham, bighunna. Junna. You, we can say junna. Janna, jinna. In, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned two of them. In the Quran, Allah mentioned the janna and, jun, uh, and jinna. Jinna as in Surah uh, An-Nas. Min al-jinnati wal-nas. Min al-jinnati wal-nas from among the jinn and mankind. That is uh, jinnah with the kasab. But jannah, jannah is uh, yani, uh, mentioned in the Quran in, in uh, 77 ayat in 44 surahs, jannah with fatha. So jinnah, that is the jinn. Jannah is the paradise. Junna in the hadith, in, in, in different hadith. This hadith, as-sawmu junna, fasting is junna. Al-imamu junna, the uh, Muslim ruler, is uh, junna. Like, what is junna here in these two uh, hadith? Junna is protection. It's like the shield of the, um, of the warrior when the fighter goes to the battle. In the old days, they used to take a shield carry a shield to protect him from the uh, from the arrows and the sword hit or like that. So the, the, the fasting does the same thing, but from the heads of the shaitan. When you are fasting, uh, you are protected from the shaitan. So you don't like, you don't, um, you don't, uh, uh, desire the uh, the uh, bad things. Everyone knows that uh, from himself. Then Ibn Qayyim said, وَأَمَرَ مَنِ اشْتَدَّتْ عَلَيْهِ شَهْوَةُ النِّكَاحِ وَلَا قُدْرَةَ لَهُ عَلَيْهِ بِالصِّيَامِ وَلَا قُدْرَةَ لَهُ عَلَيْهِ أَمَرَهُ بِالصِّيَامِ So, uh, وَجَعَلَهُ وِجَاءَ هَذِي الشَّهْوَةِ uh, he then said, and also Isa Sallam commanded the one who had the sexual desire high. He told him to marry. And if he does not have the ability to marry, then he guided him to fast. As fasting is a kind of break of the sexual desire. When you fast, your uh, desire of Yani, the sexual desire yani, get uh, lesser. lesser. As in the hadith reported by Bukhari and Muslim in their uh, two sahih and also reported by Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi and Nasai uh, with authentic chain of narration on the authority of Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu who said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab. He said, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata fal yatazawad. Wa man lam yistata' fa'alayhi bil-sawm. Fa'innahu lahu wija' Man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata fal yatazawad. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطَعْ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ فَإِنَّهُ لَهُ وِجَاءَ So he saw is saying, uh, whoever among you can offer to get married, let him do so. And whoever cannot offer it should fast, for it will be a restraint wija uh, from him or for him. Yani, uh, it restrain him, it refrain him, it holds him of doing uh, the false, of doing the false. And 
then he said fa innahu aghdu lil basari wa ahsanu lil farj fa innahu aghdu lil basar wa ahsanu lil farj so isa salam is saying uh, all young people all young men uh, those of you who can support a wife should marry for it keeps you for it keeps you uh, from looking at strange women and preserves you from uh, immorality but those who cannot uh, who cannot yani afford the marriage uh, should devote themselves to fasting for it is a means of uh, suppressing sexual desire look at that so the prophet sallallahu is also guided to that then imam ibn qayyim said wal maqsud anna masalih as-sawm lamma kanat mashhudatan bil 'uqul as-salimah wal fitr mustaqima shara'ahu Allah li 'ibadi rahmatan bihim wa ihsanan ilayhim wa himyatan lahum wa jannah he said, and the conclusion of that is that when the uh, uh, benefits of fasting is uh, witnessed by the uh, wise intellect and the, uh, the uh, perfect uh, nature, there Allah Ta'ala legislated it as a way of mercy to his slaves. There is creation and something good that Allah Ta'ala does to them by guiding them to uh, fasting and a protection for them from that which can harm them and destroy their uh, their reward. Then he said, وَكَانَ هَدْيُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى سَلَّمَ فِيهِ أَكْمَلَ الْهَدِي وَأَعْضَمَ تَحْصِيلَ الْمَقْصُودِ وَأَسْهَلَهُ عَلَى النُّفُوسِ He said, and the way of Rasulullah in performing this worship fasting was the perfect, the most perfect and the best of that. And uh, with it, the person gains the highest uh, uh, yani, or, or what is wanted from fasting against that. And uh, it is the easiest way of fasting to the uh, souls and to the people. And then he said, وَلَمَّا كَانَ فَطْمُ النُّفُوسِ عَنْ مَعْلُوفَاتِهَا وَلَمَّا كَانَ فَطْمُ النُّفُوسِ عَنْ مَعْلُوفَاتِهَا وَشَهَوَاتِهَا مِنْ أَشْتَقِّ من أشق الأمور وأصعبها تأخر فرضه إلى وسط إلى وسط الإسلام بعد الهجرة لما توطنت النفوس على التوحيد والصلاة وألفت أوامر القرآن فنقلت إليه بالتدريج. He said and when the uh, and and since since weaning since weaning the souls from what uh, the souls uh, are familiar to of the desires uh, and since that is one of the very uh, difficult things to the souls that's why Allah delayed the obligation of it prescribing it as obligatory worship up until uh, the uh, up until uh, the uh, period of Islam reached the midst of it after Hijrah, because the Prophet uh, he, he he was a prophet for twenty three years, thirteen years of them were in Mecca, no fasting, as obligatory. Ten years in Medina. Uh, fasting was uh, uh, assigned obligatory 
يعني in the second uh, year of Hijrah. So after all this long time, Allah then uh, commanded the believers to fast. Why? Uh, Ibn Qayyim is saying that when the souls uh, become so confident with uh, and so com yani, uh, we become so uh, confident with Tawheed and familiar to it and they uh, prefer it than the shirk that which they used to they used to do in the Jahiliya time and also when when they become uh, yani, uh, when they become familiar with Salah they become familiar with Salah because Salah was assigned obligatory three years before the Hijrah so now they spend three years in Mecca performing Salah and then one year in Medina performing Salah so their souls are ready to receive more uh, uh, yani, uh, instructions and um, commands and forbiddings and like that so and 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 when the souls uh, yani, become familiar with the commands of Quran, there Allah Ta'ala yani, uh, uh, transferred them or moved them gradually to, uh, to the fasting. Because fasting is something hard to come to people who never uh, yani, uh, done fasting. And now you tell them you have to hold of eating, drinking, or whatever in the meaning of eating, drinking, like glucose, like whatever, and also sexual desire from morning until sunset, from dawn until sunset. This is not something easy. In some countries, in some countries, it is twelve hours. Some others, uh, fourteen. Some others, sixteen. Some others, eighteen hours of fasting. Yani, this is something which is not yani easy. So. Allah Ta'ala uh, yani legislated the uh, ibadat gradually. But he is cultivating the uh, Muslims so that they don't so that they don't find it difficult for them to fulfill. So that they don't find it difficult for them to fulfill. So Allah Ta'ala is taking them gradually. And from that, we also learn today when we give da'wah to a non-Muslim or even to a Muslim by name who is not practicing nothing. We should not yani, emphasize you have to do this, you have to do this. Yani, subhanAllah, sometimes uh, we see some, yani, uh, some sort of things from people from dua which is not correct yani i remember in one hajj one year i was doing hajj with the new muslims the minorities here in in jeddah and uh, we had a big compound in mina uh, holding around uh, 700 700 hujjaj pilgrims all new muslims all new muslims amongst them was one syrian new muslim he was christian and uh, when we were in Arafat, I noticed that the man is not, not, not yani normal. He was very upset. He would get very angry for every and anything, just like that. He was just looking for a reason to uh, be angry. And when, when, when we were served the, uh, the lunch, before putting the uh, main plate, the rice and meat, they were uh, distributing uh, fruits like uh, bananas and uh, and uh, oranges. They were giving everyone one piece. When they came to this uh, Syrian new Muslim, he said to the guy who was distributing, he said, give me two. He said, we'll wait until we finish all and what is remaining you can take, no problem. So the man, as I said, he was just looking for any reason to get angry, to make a problem. I didn't know why. So he stood up and started yelling and shouting and what is this, 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 this. And then he left the compound. To leave the compound in Arafah is something dangerous. It's very hot, very cloudy, 
no signs to know where you are. Yeah, I mean, there are signs, but as a new person to that place, you cannot uh, yeah, I mean, recognize. So I sent someone to chase him, to follow him and try to bring him. When he came down, he returned back. But I asked while he was out, I asked, what's the matter with this man? Then I came to know that he just embraced Islam a couple of days before Hajj. And the guys who uh, invited him to Islam, they convinced him that he has to go and do circumcision. He's, an, he's, a, he's in his uh, maybe late 40s, if not 50s. So they took him to a hospital and they did the circumcision for him. And he came fresh from the hospital to the Hajj. You know, the wound is going to be very painful. And in Hajj, you have to walk a lot. You have to walk a lot and it's very hot, sweaty. So I say to them, Allah yadikum, why did you do that? They said, well, how come you come to Hajj with, without uh, circumcision? Said, who said that it is uh, mandatory to be uh, yani done right away or in Hajj? We have to go gradually. Uh, yani you could have delayed this Hajj to next year, which I don't like, I don't support because Hajj is a, a pillar of Islam, good for him to come for Hajj, but this thing could be delayed until after Hajj. But subhanAllah, uh, the, 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 the fiqh and the hikmah is something very rare to find these days. Very rare to find these days. That's why um, those who uh, study under the ulama and stick, not study just yani, see them in the college or in the circle and go, la, sticking to the alim for long periods, go with him, whom go with him, most go with him, to see how he uh, yani, deal with people, how. And uh, yani, this was the way of the Salaf. Yani, for example, yani, Tabit ibn Aslam al-Bunani, one of the narrators of hadith in all the books of hadith. Tabit ibn Aslam. He's one of the main narrators of Anas ibn Malik. He was the main student of Anas ibn Malik. They say, Tabit ibn Aslam al-Bunani, Athbatun Nasi fi Anas. He is the most uh, yani, firm narrator of Anas, the hadith of Anas, is Tabit ibn Aslam. Why? They say he studied under him for 40, 40, 40 years as a student under Anas. It's not only to gain the knowledge, la. It's to see how the alim uh, implement the knowledge. How the alim implement the knowledge. That is what you gain when you, that is the difference between a student who studied with the ulama and students who studied with the books and uh, yani with the uh, youngsters. And that's why the Salaf said, uh, The uh, people will continue being on good as long as they take knowledge from their elders. Uh, So, so anyway, <clears throat> then Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, وَكَانَ فَرْضُهُ بِالسَّنَةِ الثَّانِيَ مِنْ الْهِجْرَةِ فَتُوفِي رَسُولَ اللَّهِ سَلَمُ وَقَدْ سَامَ وَقَدْ سَامَ تِسْعَ رَمَضَانَاتِ He said, and, and uh, the... Uh, Fasting, fasting become obligatory on the second year of Hijrah. And Rasulullah passed away when he passed away, uh, having uh, fasted nine Ramadans, nine Ramadans, nine years. وَفُرِضَ أَوَّلًا عَلَى وَجْهِ التَّخْيِيرِ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ أَنْ يُطْعِمْ عَنْ كُلِّ يَوْمٍ مِسْكِينَ He said, and it was uh, at first, a choice given to the Muslim, either to fast 
or to feed the needy for each day. That was the beginning of the legislation of fasting Ramadan. That was the first year. You can either fast or you can uh, feed a needy instead. Uh, then uh, the following year it became obligatory. Obligatory. And feeding remained as, a, as a, an excuse for uh, the uh, old man and old woman who cannot, yani, uh, cannot do fasting. Today, we have some others who can be treated like the old man, old woman. Those who, those who suffer of illnesses, uh, which needs from them to uh, eat or take medicine during the day, and this is a uh, is a permanent uh, illness, such as diabetes, such as you know some other uh, yani blood pressure or which will uh, yani will uh, will be a problem for them if they don't take the medicines uh, in time. Yani some who are yani in the beginning and easy for them, uh, they can't manage to fast. But if the fasting going to go 14, 16, 18 hours, they cannot. Those who, has, uh, those who have to take uh, medicines, they cannot delay it because what remains of the day, the 24 hours, what remains is very little. Cannot yani, be used for uh, taking medicines. And if they don't take it, they might lose other organs, such as sighting, such as liver, such as kidneys, because of uh, the instability of uh, diabetes, of the blood sugar and blood pressure and like that. So such as these people, they can break the fast and feed a needy instead of every day. Yeah. If, they cannot, if, if, they, if, if they cannot fast forever, if they have to take medicines uh, regularly and the irregular uh, way of taking this medicine might put them in very uh, serious situation, serious health situation, then like these people, they are given the permission to break the fast and or, or not too fast, not too fast and to feed an ED for each day instead. And also the one who is sick, but uh, his sickness is not that yani, uh, sickness which cannot be uh, healed. Uh, when we say cannot be healed according to the experience of doctors, not according to Allah, nothing can, uh, yani, uh, there is nothing that Allah can, cannot yani, uh, provide uh, healness for it. But we, we're talking about uh, yani, normal illnesses, uh, normal illnesses. So the, the one who is ill is given permission to break his fast, break his fast. And also the traveler. And now traveler, whether he travels by plane, by car, by ship, or by uh, whatever mean, uh, and if the mean is, um, yani causes the travel to be trouble or very easy like airplanes today. Still he has the right to break the fast. Still he has the right to break the fast. And whether the distance is cut in uh, one hour or wh whatever, if, yani, I mean, if the mean, if he is, Traveling in a, in, a, in a very fast airplane that cuts um, in one hour what is cut in, 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 for example, in car for a day and in horse or in horse maybe for uh, a week and on camel maybe 10 to 14 days. You know, because the distance might be the same. Like, for example, I tell you something. Uh, Rasulullah traveled from Medina to Mecca in his Hajj and it took him 10 days. 
to, to cut this distance on camel, 10 days. Today we go by car, it takes us four hours, four hours. By plane, it takes us from uh, Medina to Jeddah uh, only 25 minutes. And by, play, by, by train today, it takes from Medina to Mecca one and a half hours. Approximately one and a half hours, two hours maximum. Yani Rasulullah uh, it took him 10 days. So the change of the mean of transport does not change the ruling. The ruling remain as the origin. Naam. So he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Naam. Uh, so uh, the, the Islam gave the permission for the one who's traveling to uh, and, and the sick whose sickness is not permanent uh, to break the fast and make up the days later after Ramadan somewhere, sometime. And uh, in regard to the uh, woman who is um, uh, the woman who is um, pregnant or breastfeeding. And this is another issue, uh, another issue. Um, women who is, uh, or maybe we can, we, we continue inshallah, it's not that much. Um, the woman who, um, has uh, the woman who has the woman who is pregnant or uh, yani, uh, or um, uh, or breastfeeding uh, the ulama have two different opinions in regard Two different uh, opinions in regard. Um, the first is what Ibn Qayyim has said here. He said, if they fear that they themselves get affected because of fasting and uh, yani being pregnant and or, or uh, being uh, breastfeeding, they say, if this is the case, if they fear that they are affected, then um, they can break the fast and uh, and uh, make the days up. But if they fear that uh, their babies might be might might affect, then they they make up the days and feed. A needy for each day. And then he said, but if, uh, if, 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 if they break the fast, not for fearing uh, any uh, harmful for themselves or for their babies, just, but, just because uh, they want the health to be and is strong. He said then, they can only feed a needy uh, as uh, it used to be in the beginning of, of Islam. As I said, that the, the proper opinion in this regard is that uh, they, the woman who is pregnant uh, and the woman who is breastfeeding, they uh, only have to, uh, they can't break the fast and only have to feed a needy for each day, for each day. And making up the days is not uh, mandatory upon them, not mandatory upon them. Now, uh, as it is reported by Imam Ahmad, Tirmidhi, Abu Dawood, and Nusai, Ibn Majah, Tahawi, and Tabari, on the authority of Anas ibn Malik al-Kaabi, who said that the, the Messenger of Allah said, indeed Allah 
uh, the exalted, the majestic, uh, has uh, permitted the one who is traveling to shorten the prayer. And the woman who is pregnant and the one who is breastfeeding to uh, break the fast. To break the fast. Now. So, some of uh, Al-Ilm, as I said, they said they break the fast and make up the days if they fear for themselves, if they fear for their baby, they uh, uh, break the fast and make up that fast and feed a needy. But the proper opinion, which we found in the lead, uh, adheres is that they break the fast and feed the needy for each day. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi. Here we stop and we end our session today. Hoping to see you insha'Allah next week, Monday. Wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.